Hello, I'm Dr. Elmer Soriano giving you an overview of the Zero Hunger Lab. Um, first, who we are. Um, the Zero Hunger Lab was initiated by the Civica Asian Development Academy, and our mission is to grow one million leaders and change makers who will advance human development. We are a develop, development social venture, so we focus on social problems, uh, but we're not an NGO. We're a for-profit, and we try to earn our revenues by so working on uh, complex social problems. We focus at, on the intersection of leadership, innovation, and impact, and we do consulting, training, and social labs. Um, why did we start the Zero Hunger Lab? First, we saw that the universities have R&D capacity for uh, addressing childhood malnutrition and prototyping social innovations. And many organizations are innovating on health and have data sets. Um, third, the reaching the last mile in the barangays in the hard to reach uh, households requires significant uh, design thinking and innovation. So all of the problems cannot come from the capital city or a few top universities. And uh, lastly, students, professionals, and academics are now accustomed to online collaboration. Um, our related projects, we participated in the C4C Fellowship with, Ju uh, with Johns Hopkins University, AIM, and Ateneo, where we were part of the faculty that uh, delivered training on health communication. And uh, with DSWD, our members of our faculty helped design a curriculum that was delivered through 11 universities to 1,000 social workers from 1,000 municipalities. So we, are, we work close a lot with um, universities by co-designing curricula that they, learn, that they deliver on campus. So what is a social lab? A social lab is a platform that addresses complex social challenges. They have three core characteristics. One, they are social, meaning they are, they do not confine themselves to a single discipline, say uh, the Department of Economics or the School of Nursing alone you know, as, as separate disciplines, but they are designed to foster collaboration across disciplines and, and they are necessarily social. Second, they are experimental. So uh, we do not just describe problems. We have put the social labs put a premium on prototyping, trying to solve problems by deploying prototypes in the real world. And they use a systems-based approach. So we see systems nested within systems. So households are within communities, which are within cities, which are within provinces. So we take stock of the multiple systems that uh, are interacting with each other as far as nutrition and food security are concerned. The objectives of the Zero Hunger Lab are, one, to accelerate research and innovation towards addressing childhood malnutrition and food security. Two, incubate and scale up relevant social innovations to address undernutrition and nutrition sensitive agriculture and food security. Three, mobilize academe, industry, gov government agencies, local government units as innovation partners. And four, build upon the gains of the bridging leadership ecosystem. Uh, the bridging leadership ecosystem has been um, used as platforms by the health sector, the DSWD. So we want to build upon that plat those platforms. The components include student engagements. Students all over the country produce tens of thousands of term papers, projects, and thesis. Second, in-service programs for practitioners and graduate students. So we have faculty research and in-service um, projects where practitioners do uh, projects under the Zero Hunger Lab. So innovation projects under the Zero Hunger Lab, but uh, deploying these uh, prototypes in real settings. 
Third is uh, the, zero, the scale up programs. So uh, helping organizations replicate their progr the programs that work. And then fourth, nutrition sensitive agriculture and inclusive farm to fork systems. So the broader food security uh, issue is related to nutrition. Functions of a university-based zero hunger lab. So if you were a university, say you're a dean or a university president, you might want to think of the zero hunger lab as similar to the labs that you might already have in your university. You might have a chemistry lab or an agriculture field farm. Um, and so the zero hunger lab will be in, um, in, will focus on accelerating research and innovations and solution generation by mobilizing students and faculty to do research on nutrition and food security. Uh, the, 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 fun, the Zero Hunger Lab would function by one, convening stakeholders, two, incubating innovations through participatory action research, three, data management as uh, more and more researchers do research on uh, nutrition and food security, then the university will get to accumulate um, data. Four, linkaging and research alignment with other universities. Five, research utilization by engaging your own local mayor or governor um, in addressing nutrition and food security problems. There are many stakeholders or segments um, that are interested in nutrition and food security. In general, the marginalized sectors such as farmers, fisher folk, urban poor, indigenous people, the, they are all vulnerable to food insecurity and undernutrition. And uh, in order to cultivate the cross-cutting conversations, we will use a combination of tra traditional media, behavioral change communication, and mobile learning so that the diff diverse stakeholders can be reached. We are working to build up an inter-university network so that multiple universities all over the country can collaborate, share data, and uh, co-author research and co-innovate with each other. We have done similar uh, university consortia in the drug rehab space. In the, in the photo here, we have a partnership between the Development Academy of the Philippines, the University of the Philippines, and Ateneo. The idea is for the Zero, Hab, La, Zero Hunger Lab network to have university partners all over the country working on addressing local hunger and nutrition, uh, food insecurity challenges, but at the same time, aggregating their insights so that we can also advance the national policy discourse. Here we have an example of a student who is actively engaged in um, local problem solving. So the, the, this person here is the mayor. She's a young mayor of Anilao Iloilo. And um, we were coaching her and we encouraged her to work with university students to do research. So here we have um, nursing students from UP Iloilo and they did research and now they're presenting it to the mayor. So we've, uh, although this project focused on teenage pregnancy um, because that was the priority project of the mayor, it is il illustrative of the social lab methodology where students work on real world problems and engage real stakeholders in real conversations uh, that help move the decision making and planning forward. In this photo, uh, this photo taken in our UNICEF funded project in Sultan Kudarat, and students here are reporting their findings on childhood malnutrition and this uh, individual over here is the mayor of the municipality and these are senior high school students. So you can see how the social lab becomes a shared 
collaborative space between the LGU and the local schools you know, if they agree to jointly work on the malnutrition problems and food security problems of the municipality. In this photo, we have an example of how research can feed into local decision making. Um, the, the text is too small to see here, but what we see here are roadmaps used in guiding municipalities on health systems development. This um, roadmaps were created by Zwilling Family Foundation, and you will see that they are color-coded red, yellow, green. And here you see a before and after, 2014 and 2016. And some indicators uh, were colored red in the past, and they had uh, improved to green after two years. And for childhood malnutrition and food security, we can similarly uh, develop color-coded roadmaps like this so that mayors can act upon emerging research from the lab and move uh, their health system so that we'll see more yellows and greens indicating that the systems on childhood malnutrition and food security have been upgraded. There are four synergistic components, research, policy dialogue, policy design and implementation, and policy dissemination. And the Zero Hunger Lab can contribute to any of the four spaces. Um, in terms of knowledge capital, we start with online research and populating the Zero Hunger Labs with content so that students and faculty can start working on innovation projects in the lab. And as they start developing prototypes, local prototypes, we are also building human capital. So where the local faculty and students be, have a more grounded understanding of the uh, nutrition and food security challenges in their own municipality, thus making them local experts. And as they do that, uh, the we are working towards a scenario where in the province and in the region, the Zero Hunger Labs at the local universities become the local think tank for uh, nutrition and food security. We, the idea is to aggregate emerging knowledge from the many different Zero Hunger Labs through a shared channel similar to TEDx. So if you um, know TEDx, you see, we know that a lot of universities hold TEDx events, but the content, the videos of these TEDx um, events are aggregated in the TEDx channel. So the idea is for the Zero Hunger Lab to similarly be an aggregator of content emerging from the different universities. So here we have a rough um, governance roadmap for 18 months so that an um, interested municipality or province that wants to improve uh, nutrition and food security over 18 months can um, go can journey with the local zero hunger lab and they undergo jointly different uh, steps along the way that contribute to actual improvements in childhood nutrition and food security. Uh, over time, we expect that the academic research will feed to local governance and also be um, in terms of think tank work, policy advice, as well as capacity building, yeah. uh, so, such that the academe can become competent in training the local staff on uh, nutrition and food security. So we're inviting you well, if you're in the university, whether you're an, in, in the administration or an instructor, we are interested in working with you as an individual or in, with your institution, whether the department or the university level. Uh, steps that you are, uh, that we suggest you take are one, identify interested faculty and students and their pre preferred topics and themes within the um, nutrition and food security domain. 
and then start scoping out projects. No? So students always have to do term papers and research and projects. So if they want to do a project in nutrition, then they can start pursuing that under the lab. No? And uh, the faculty can similarly do faculty research or align student research under the lab. And then ideally you link with field partners. No? There's the National Nutrition Council and then the municipalities have their own local nutrition councils, barangay nutrition officers. So we suggest that we start working with collaborating with local partners and initiate conversations to formalize the partnerships. Okay, so that uh, the partnerships become enduring um, institutional partnerships rather than short-term um, researches um, that die when the students finish their research. No? So over time, ideally, universities enter into multi-year partnerships with the local um, government units so that they are able to take their partnership deeper and deeper and they can contribute more value to each other over time. So we invite you to join the Zero Hunger Lab and feel free to reach out to us should you have any other questions. Thank you.